This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. My most important role is that of a parent of a, of a beautiful child who was diagnosed in 2000 with 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. I had started my career actually, I had a special education credential, but when San Juan hired me, they put me in a regular ed position and that's where I stayed. But upon the birth of my daughter, I was able to put my training as a special educator into practice. Technology was the way that I was able to provide scaffolds for my daughter. And I approached everything as technology came in the fold about in 2000 through this lens of instruction. I didn't approach it from, because I wasn't tech savvy, I didn't approach it from here's this new cool gadget. I approached it from my daughter needs multiple repetitions of a concept, maybe 25 to 30. And I, as a human being, am, am struggling to get her to engage for 25 to 30 repetitions. But I found that with technology, I could allow her to engage at a deeper level for whatever reason, which we weren't quite, we were still trying to figure out. I also spent some time as an um, instructional technologist and um, work with Kalei and Emily on some other research projects. And you'll see as we come along what we really are, the practitioners in the field. We're parents, we're teachers, and our passion is about having people look at instructional strategies, not necessarily just the technology. But we wanted to start from an, a lens of action research. So it, and with any good um, research project, you start with this question, right? Your essential question. So here's where we started. We got together and we noticed, as probably all of you have in this room, that there was something about touch technology, whether it's iPads, whether it's uh, different types of tools. There was something about it, the touch technology that was engaging for students. But we also were curious about the ability through app selection to differentiate instruction for students. Could we, through our app selection, differentiate content for students? So one of our first questions was, how does pilot technology, and by the way, this happens to be iPads, but it's any pilot technology, how does it allow us to differentiate for all learners? How does it support the needs for individual students? And most importantly, how does it provide opportunities for students to demonstrate their learning? through content production. Could students show that they understand a concept with a piece of technology um, through those supports that maybe they couldn't have before? So those were our kind of essential questions as we began this um, looking at this. But because we're all teachers, we also set up learning targets for today's session and here's the things we hope you'll be able to do. We hope you kind of understand how you can use an iPad as an assistive um, learning device. We hope we'll give you some insights. We're gonna give you a lot of resources that we use, and we hope we'll help you to see that. We also hope that you'll be able to identify the um, effective attributes of an iPad pilot. There are some things that were intentional that we put into play to make sure that this um, pilot was successful, and we hope we'll be able to call those out for you as, um, as we move through. A little bit about San Juan. We have about 70 schools. We have about 40,000 students. We're kind of in the northeast area of Sacramento County. Fairly large district. Our special education programs, we, we serve about 4,700 students from infancy through age 22. We have a variety of specialized services. And we'll, we'll talk more about um, what those services are a little more in depth as we continue on. And as Gina kind of already called out, what was unique about this project was its ability to allow collaboration 
with special ed, regular ed, and tech services. Prior to that, people kind of worked in silos did their work separately. And also you'll see within this project that you'll hear the voice of general ed, special ed teachers and staff and administrators. And this next is just a short video clip that, we'll, that we've um, prepared um, that Calais and Emily worked so hard on um, talking about our project. iPads in the classroom has opened up a whole new realm for students. They attach to the technology naturally, so it's opened up a new way for them to be creative and take content and use it really in a, a quicker, more intelligent, more creative way. I think it's critical. We say that this technology is the future of education, but it's really not. It's the here and now of education. And if you don't have it here now, your kids are truly falling behind as far as 21st century skills in the classroom. iPads are definitely a phenomenal tool. Uh, my special ed students are reluctant to get up and present, for example. When they have an iPad and, and using that technology, they are enthusiastic to get up in front of my class and hold their iPad and talk about their concepts in their iBooks and they are not afraid, they're not nervous, they're not shy. And they're very proud of it because they're able to be successful. Staff um, and parents as well. By seeing schools, especially with, say, as a K-8 school, integrating this technology from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade, they've been more excited about the ways in which students are learning, um, the possibilities of you know, what the learning is going to look like in the future, um, getting behind initiatives to bring more technology onto the site. And the iPads have brought this buzz around campus of, wow, look what we're going to be able to do next year, and what cool new things are, are my teachers going to come up with. Flash Carlet. So open that and you'll get right to here. Uh, another thing that's really been a big help is for uh, support and redoing formative tests. To redo quizzes and tests as having a hundred something students, I wouldn't be able to keep up with the paperwork if I was doing it all by paper. But having our School World website, the grades get automatically done. I can uh, go check the grades. They can do it multiple times and I can put them in my little little communal back room with uh, somebody and they can take them there on their own time where other people are working. So that's been a really big help. Yeah, we're getting great support from the district to learn how to use them, to learn how to use the teacher aspects. In this program we're using Khan Academy for teaching math. It has video, it has, um, you know, questions, it has examples, and it also has teacher information. So we can keep track of how many minutes each our students are working. We can keep track of what problems they're working on. Seeing the classrooms that are really implementing the iPads this year, you do not see behavior problems going on. The kids are engaged in what they are learning. So it's really increased, I think, instructional time because you're not dealing with behavior problems and just getting the students a lot more interested in the subjects because they're using a tool that they're familiar with. Children, I think, see those as a perhaps a, a fun thing to get to use, but everything they're doing on those is extremely educational. It isn't just playing with an iPad. For example, in PE, I went out to watch an iPad lesson and they were not only checking heart rate, um, but they were also, at that point, learning how to video each other so they could make sure their form was correct for push-ups and sit-ups and so there were other applications that they were using. I have found apps that closely fit their goals and a lot of times they're similar in groups of students and then each kid knows to go to their app when it's time for math group. They have a choice of two or three apps that those are appropriate for them and they go to them and I think it gives them that they're excited about that app. They know that it's the app for them and it, make, it gives them that agency, that control of I get to choose what I'm learning today, even though actually in the background I'm choosing which range of things they're learning. In the past, for my students, their curriculum has looked so incredibly different from the curriculum of other students. And of course on an iPad what they're working on still is pretty different from what a second grader would be working on, but they're holding an iPad. It looks the same. And what we've learned from this is that one size doesn't fit all. So two things have changed. The style of learning has changed and the style of teaching has changed. Through this process, our teachers have become more coaches and been able to use real-time data to support students in their learning students also have been able to assess where they are right here and now 
and get the support they need. Scoot a little bit closer to Chloe, if you could. Go that way. Thank you, honey. Okay, and I'm gonna take her picture, like that. At first I thought it was going to be difficult, but it turned out to be pretty easy once you understood the management of it. Assigned the kids the numbers and started slowly. I thought it was just an amazing addition to our normal curriculum. We start every day with iPads. Uh, when we first started with iPads, we used them in more of a remedial sense at first to, to uh, shore up skills in reading, practice math skills, which we still do each day. But now we have taught the kids to do a lot of um, creative programs, which to me has been the most exciting part. I think it helps kids understand the storytelling process. They understand applications between applications. They're able to start in one, end in another, make a little podcast or video. They're able to do a lot of things I didn't imagine kindergartners would be able to do. I try to use them mostly for a production tool. So we use Book Creator and we created, we did our writing workshop on those. We did literary nonfiction books and they're awesome. Like little second graders did these awesome, awesome books that you would not ever get them to do otherwise, I, I don't think. I think what it did overall was it just fosters that culture that we have here of um, each student is an individual learner that everybody has a different pace that they learn at, differentiation for each student and personal personalization is so important for our students that this has kind of opened up another door for us as far as giving them specific goals, giving them a very focused um, goal. And it's also very entertaining. It makes their academic life even that much better. My role this year, myself and another gentleman, Joe Wood, was were instructional technologists, and our job was to support um, the variety of technology that currently exists in San Juan. Um, iPads are just one type of technology in San Juan, but as you saw in the video, we have interactive whiteboards, about 900 of them, um, and a variety of other kinds of technology. All of our teachers have some type of computer, either a laptop or a desktop, to use in their instruction. So we have a variety of, of things that we're using in our district, and my job was to support that and the instruction in that. So what do we do in the project? Kind of want to give you that high, um, that mile high, mile view, high view of that project. So Cheryl talked about the intentionality of this project. We had a comprehensive rollout, and these are some key factors. The comprehensive rollout was one of them. Um, instructional and technical support. You know, if the technology doesn't work, uh, it doesn't matter how much technology you have in the schools, if it doesn't work then, and teachers are frustrated using it, they're not going to use it. And the other part was how to use it effectively in instruction. Uh, and then a, another key, final key component was professional development, that our teachers um, had the opportunity to um, learn with and from each other. They had time for collaboration um, and time to work with, uh, with each other. So our project was a small scale iPad pilot project. If you Google um, iPad pilot projects, you see that all of them, many of them are one to one. So they're rolling it out in a grade level or a couple grade levels and it's one to one. This one was not. It was um, with six schools and they each had, this, each of the schools had a set, a class set of iPads and one for the teacher. Um, there were six schools involved that were two elementary Cameron Ranch and Marimont Elementary, um, Woodside, which is a K-8 school, Carnegie is a middle school, and then two high schools. So we had the range K-12. And as, as we talked about, the, the iPads and the different technology were purchased um, using funds from technology services and also special education. And both of the directors um, that oversee those programs had an interest in how can we differentiate learning and how can technology play that role. So we started the school year, this past school year, with 1,200 iPads. Those kind of just came about organically at school sites. Um, administrators had them, teachers had them. Um, school sites were spending limited funds buying iPads. But by the end of just now, the end of this school year, we, had four, we have about 4,500. And that number is growing. Ironically, though, only 210 of those are part of our iPad pilot. So a very small portion of the iPads that currently exist in San Juan have to do anything with, um, with the pilot project. Um, 
But it wasn't just iPads that we were piloting. We have a strategic plan in our district that over, we oversee and kind of guides our work of what we want students to know and be able to do. Um, and as part of that, we formed a tech hardware standards committee that was looking at what's the standard, you know, ch technology is changing every day. So what's the standard technology we would want teachers to have and for it to be in the classroom and also students to have access to. And so some of the other pilot um, technology, it included the iPads, it included a Bretford cart, which is a sinking cart to manage those 35 iPads. Um, in addition to that, we had a 70-inch LED TV that you saw in the video. Uh, we've been, we used a, a type of technology called eBeam to be able to make it interactive. So, um, so teachers were trying that out, and a computer that was dedicated to that, to that um, iPad cart. Um, so that's some of the technology. These are some of the, pro, the, the special ed programs that were part of the school sites. So we have full inclusion at the two elementary school sites. Um, at our high school, we have a, the only deaf and hard of hearing program um, in our district. And then some of the schools had resource and learning labs, as well as special day classes, which included um, an ASD class, autism, uh, sorry, autism spectrum disorder, and then an ILS class, independent living skills. So a variety of students um, were um, being served through this iPad pilot project. So we didn't just go in and say, here you go, here's iPads, because simply putting iPads in the classroom is not going to make the difference. What we did was we had um, a proposal that the school sites had to um, submit. They had a team of teachers that were part of that, um, between four and eight, and every school had um, a teacher that was part of special ed, as well as general ed and other supports. Uh, other support teachers and their administrator. And they all had an instructional focus. So each school was different depending on what their instructional focus was. There was, as I said, quite a bit of professional learning that was part of this. Our teachers spent over 50 hours um, in professional learning. We brought in Apple for two days of um, learning how to use iPads in, um, as an instructional tool. They had a monthly collaboration, so they had a lot of dedication. They had to put in a lot of their own time. Um, we, Cheryl talked a little bit about our multimedia user group. It's a Saturday, they give up, and they, we had a breakout session for them there, as well as myself and my colleague provided on-site collaboration and time and coaching at the school site. And there was a variety of uses with iPads. We had from whole group, small group, you know, pairs, individuals, and managing a set of 35 iPads, just so you know, one is easy. One is you get to choose what apps you want, and it's, if I have an iPhone, I could put that same app on my iPhone. That doesn't exist in education. In education, you have to buy one app for every iPad that you have. So if I want iMovie on all 35 iPads, I have to buy that, or the school site does. Apple's provided um, a way to do that at a, at a discount, a 50% discount, but they have to buy 20 or more. So managing that and knowing how to do that was just, uh, besides using it in instruction, was hard. Um, and then, of course, our students used it. Um, the student use was for a variety of reasons, from assistive technology to practicing skills. You know, interesting enough, many of our pilot teachers were thinking, oh, iPads, we'll use it as a research tool. Um, you know, I can see it for writing, maybe some skill building, but I'm not sure much what else can, can come out of that. And really what they saw was that students can really produce and show what they know. That a test isn't everything, that they can come up and show that they understand the content, they have a chance to review and preview content, and that's what that technology can do for them. Um, if you didn't know, there's a lot of accessibility features on an iPad that I didn't know when we started. Um, and so uh, it's built right into the iPad, and our schools um, found those very useful to support all learners. Um, VoiceOver, it's you can use it in, in an app or um, if you're browsing the web, and it allows um, spe speech of the text. Um, you can zoom the entire screen, and these features can be turned on and off. Um, there's large text. You can increase the font on it and um, turn the background to black and with right, white writing. And if you triple click on your home button for the iPad, um, it, it can toggle those features on and off. So, um, trying to figure out how we could make it accessible to all students. There were things that were already built into the iPad that allowed us to be able to do that. So our school, Cameron Ranch, is a full inclusion site, which means we have children with developmental disabilities in general ed all day long. We also have resource 
students and students with, who are English language learners. And we also have an ILS program on campus. So we have two classes. I teach K2, and my partner teacher, Danielle, teaches 3-5 of students with developmental disabilities. And these are special day classes. And what our school wanted to do was to find out a way we could not only develop effective oral and written communication skills, but how we could do that across all of the needs of all of our learners. So how we could collaborate as staff and also as students to do that in a 21st century learning way. What we decided to do was to pair one ILS class and one general ed class for a six week science unit and then do the same thing with the other ILS class. We have had iPads in our schools and since January of 2011. Uh, they started actually in our ILS classes where we are using them as communication devices and also as instructional tools. This year, we did not have any students who were using them as communication devices. We just happened through the classes that the kids that we had to have verbal communicators this year. Uh, but last year, that was not the case. Uh, students were using the iPads on their IEP goals, a very focused um, work, but also on then the work that we were doing in our collaboration between general ed and ILS. We chose a couple of target students to kind of think about when we're looking at how we use the iPads. Student A was a fourth grade student. He has an intellectual disability. His IEP goal that was set for him last spring was to learn 50 sight words and to independently create a four to five word sentence. This was his first year in our ILS program. We did also this year, in addition to the iPads, have new technology or new curriculum. And it was a really rich, wonderful reading curriculum. So with those two things together, he mastered his goal. He's reading an additional 52 sight words. And he met his first two objectives in writing his sample sentences. So we saw some really amazing growth. Uh, student B is a student in my class. She was a first grader with Down syndrome, intellectual disability, and a mild hearing loss. She's also an English language learner. Her IEP goals included identifying 15 sight words from a field of four, 15 letter sounds, and writing nine uppercase letters. I wrote those goals in November. By June, she could identify 14 sight words and 26 letter sounds and write nine letters with some verbal prompts. So with this new curriculum and with this technology, the students are learning at a faster rate than we even thought possible, which is just fantastic. When we sat down, we decided to collaborate with science units. We thought that would be a fun way to get the kids engaged and interested and also to then work on that oral and written communication in an interesting way. Our units were on magnetism and then the butterfly life cycle, and we did take pre and post test data. One thing we discovered as we started collaborating was that the general ed idea of data and the special ed idea of data are a little bit different. And we had initially some challenges figuring out how we were going to measure what was the success of our project. When we were sitting, sitting down and planning our units, we were trying to think of what apps we could use, and we definitely used the AT&T code scanner. We created QR codes and had kids scan the um, QR code, and that would take them to the website that we wanted them to go see, and the kids would then find a YouTube video or a worksheet or something like that that they could learn off of. We also used the camera for kids to record what they were doing in small groups. We used some productivity apps, the Story Kit and the Poplet Light, to create some really wonderful things. This was especially used in the Magnet Unit, which was a fourth grade unit. They created some really awesome things with how magnets work. They did experiments. Um, if you would go into that class while they were working on it, the kids would be paired in groups of two or three. It was a mix of special ed, general ed. You didn't actually know which kid was which unless you knew the kid. Um, and they were working together to create really wonderful presentations that they then shared with the whole class. We had, initially when we sat down to plan this, we thought, well, isn't this going to be great? We're going to collaborate, special ed, general ed. The kids will have this really fun opportunity. And we'll learn about what they learn with the iPads and also how they learn together. I don't think we really planned out how socially that would be working. We had an idea on how we would do that. We were going to, they all knew each other because they go to school together anyway, but how we were going to do that together. <sighs> I think in retrospect, that was the richest part of the program, the two classes working together in a very interesting way. Um, I was telling Kalei that 
one of the first things I did when I walked into the general ed class with my class was I used sign language in my class and I taught the general ed kids some of the basic signs they'd probably be seeing me use so that they knew what they were. Well, some of them immediately turned around and started signing to my students. And my students were looking at them like, okay, you're telling me to sit and I am sitting, so what are you doing? <laughs> it, was, it was very interesting. We kind of had to explain that you don't just sign randomly at people. It, it's not gonna work. Um, but they did get excited in that, that they could communicate with each other better. My class, because we had had iPads already for a year at the time when we started, my kids were very conversant with the iPads. They already knew how to use the iPads. And as a school, we had already come up with common agreements in how we would use the iPads. Every kid knew the Apple Up symbol, which was when we say Apple Up, you turn your iPad over, so the Apple is on the bottom is facing up, and that means you're done working and you're listening to the teacher. Uh, we also had other agreements about how you would be respectful of the iPad, how you would only use the app that the teacher encouraged you to use. My students are very aware that if I tell them to use an app and I catch them playing Angry Birds, the iPad is gone. It's always Angry Birds, I don't know why. Um, we did have some technical difficulties with getting everything to work, which kind of slowed us down a little bit. Um, I think though, the really successful part of it was our collaboration between general ed and special ed. Our school is, has always been a very collaborative school, but being collaborative in a more focused way was very interesting for all of us. Uh, from the perspective of a classroom teacher using an iPad, I think that iPads are incredibly motivational. Every kid comes in and wants to use it, from my highest functioning kid to my lowest functioning kid. I had a student this year who was deaf, nonverbal, um, just came from China. Uh, he mostly wanted to use the iPad just to push the home button over and over again, but as the year went on, we kept introducing it to him and he was starting to use some apps by the end of the year. Um, they really are a very universal tool, and as I said in the little video, I think they're a great tool f for creating an equality of learning. They're all sitting and using iPads, and they look like students together, whether they're using the same app or not. And I think it's a great way to get them doing their individual work while working collaborative collaboratively as well. One of the best success, this is one of my students at home over vacation. She is watching the Chipmunks movie on three different iPads at once. <laughs> it's at three different points in the movie as well. Her family calls her an iPad snob. They bought an iPad 1 for her when she first joined my class. They then later bought a few iPad 2s for the family. She will only use the iPad 2s. The iPad 1 gets left on the table. One thing we did not anticipate when we started using iPads in the classroom was how many families would really <coughs> take our enthusiasm and take it home. We work at a Title I school and not a lot of families have a lot of money for an iPad, but now of the 32 students we have in our ILS program, nine of them have iPads at home that their parents have bought for them. Um, their parents often ask us what apps we use so they can purchase the same apps at home. Uh, it's been really exciting to see everyone just sort of start to use it. I love having an iPad in class for many reasons, but one thing that's really wonderful is being able to take a screenshot or a little video of what a kid is doing and send it to their parents, email it to their parents. Their parents love it, and many parents have started emailing me videos and screenshots back. So I'm getting that communication between home and school, which is really awesome. Um, one other way that we used iPads in my class this year we have a story time, and I often use the iPad to put it up on the smart board in front of this class for us all to read the story together. It's big, it can be interactive, it's very exciting. Another way I use that is when I have a new app, I use that opportunity to demonstrate for the whole class how the app can be used. So I'll plug the iPad into the smart board, and in front of the whole class, we'll practice it together, we'll take turns, and it's a really nice way to introduce it as we go. One of the biggest questions for us is, um, what app? What, what app do you use? And so on our II San Juan page, the iPad.SanJuan.edu, we do have some suggestions on different apps that you can use. Um, as a culmination to this project, I am in the process um, of writing an ebook, an electronic book. Um, I'll show you at a little bit, if we have time at the end um, of that book, um, that really 
goes more in depth. You know, an hour and a half on a year's worth of project would be really hard. But some of the things that our, our schools did collect were, you know, what apps they used and for what reason. Um, it really, it wasn't what app should we use. It's what's the instruction. What's what's the instructional goal, and then what app would best support that? So that's a very different way of looking at it. Instead of here's the tool, now figure out how to use it. It's what's the instructional goal, and then how what app would best support that. So let's look a little bit um, at each of the schools. Um, Marimont's the uh, the other elementary school. It's a full inclusion site. Um, they wanted to know how to use technology to support effective instruction for all students at their school. That was their instructional goal. That's kind of a, a pretty broad goal. And the groups that were involved was a kindergarten teacher. Um, then they had two in, um, special day classes, a K-2 and a 3-5, and their teacher. And one, the only physical education teacher, which was kind of interesting. Um, with the class set of iPads, it's hard to share those. So each school decided how they wanted to share it. Some school sites split up the iPads 10, 10, 10, or something like that, um, and used it on an ongoing basis and kept it in there throughout the whole pilot. And some schools did what Emily's school did, was to use the iPads um, for a certain period of time. Because it's really hard to share it. I get it for two hours, and you get it for two hours, and you, you never really get good at using anything. So they really decided, let's use it for a certain period of time, and let's collaborate around that. And then once I've used it, let me move to the other, another class and help them with the use of it. The interesting thing about this kindergarten class, you know, our youngest learners are, are coming in already pretty tech savvy. And at the beginning of the year, this kindergarten class opened up the laptops that they had. The school happens to have a, a class set of laptops, so they were using them. And um, about a third of them became really frustrated as soon as they opened those um, laptops. And this was prior to having the iPads. And they started, they opened it up, and this is what they did. Teacher, mine is broken. And they are familiar with touch technology. So they were frustrated that that was a broken technology and it just didn't work. And really what it was was an obsolete technology for the students that were part, those, that handful of students that were part of that class. So they were um, thrilled to be able to use the iPads in their class. Some across the board in K-12, here in, in, in this school also, um, here's some things that they found that were highlights. Increased time on tasks, whether it was PE, using them in kindergarten, or their ILS classes. Increased motivation, lots of hands-on, and a confidence in students that they didn't see before. Um, a, a, an ability for them to demonstrate what they were learning. Here's what some of the teachers are saying at that school, at Marie Mont. As teachers of students with autism, we have been able to create visuals for lessons quickly and easily. These visuals are an integral part of our lesson for students with autism. So it's an easy way to bring that visual in that, and, um, and help their students see what they, wanted, what they needed to see. The ease of use for the student has far surpassed any other device we have used previously. Using iPads as a motivational reinforcer helped get students excited about learning, excited about using iPads, and in turn, we saw a direct correlation with increased positive behavior. Um, this, the teachers that uh, were part of the, the special day classes, one of them said um, that they had an IEP meeting and they met with the parents and they said, now we have um, a recreation goal that we added to your child's IEP. And the, the parents said, we've never had a recreational goal. And they said, well, the iPads have been that motivational for your student, and now they're using it to help um, that they have to earn that use of the iPad. And they wanted, that was something that was motivational to them. Um, this is an app that the, that class used um, as an augmented and alternative communication device. Um, they said touch chat. Some people use Proloquo, but they, believe, they li really liked touch chat in their class. They said it was easy for students to use. They could add different pictures for their students, um, of their students uh, that they took with the camera or with the iPad. And they could easily create vocabulary and things. So this was an, an, an app that the teachers really used. And that school, they, they did um, use it for communication. So that was Marie Mont, just a brief overview. By the way, for Marie Mont in the elementary, the PE teacher used the camera tool a lot because there's not wireless, and if you want to go on the internet, there's wire, you need the wireless, so there's not wireless out on the PE playground area. So instead, what they did was, you know, they were um, 
doing different exercises and they were making sure their form was correct. And they, the teacher said, oh, we could just easily film them. And when they filmed themselves, then they self-evaluated and they were um, peer evaluating each other and saying, okay, I really did not do a great job on that push-up. I obviously need to work on that. So some simple tools like the camera just um, really added to the use of iPads for PE. Um, Woodside is a K-8 school. Interesting enough, Woodside piloted iPads, but they also piloted another technology called Google Chromebooks. Google Chromebooks is a laptop that's a web browser, and you can, it doesn't have any hardware or software that you download. It's just web browsing. And the teacher that was using that was using it in 7, 8th, uh, seventh and eighth grade class for writing and the ease of use of the Google Chromebook. They could easily get online we, um, and they were able to write right away and use it very easily and the iPads, that was, it was a little harder to get started. The managing of it, finding what apps, those kinds of things was just a little bit harder and the teachers that were part of the iPad pilot said, you know, I don't want the iPads. You know, I really think I want Google Chromebooks because it's so easy to use and I'm frustrated with using iPads and you know, when you talk about a pilot, a pilot means that you're really testing it out. And that, we really tried to put that in the, in the minds of our teachers, that you are tied. There's no answer, there's no magic person saying, this is how you use it. It's you on the ground floor using it and then finding out what works and what doesn't. So um, they have since changed their mind and they um, now find that the iPad has been invaluable and they would not trade them. They were looking at it and how to use it for student writing specifically and to support balanced literacy. Um, there were a variety of classroom, a two, three combo class, fifth grade, um, using it with English language learners and also to support something called Read 180, which is an intervention for reading. Uh, some highlights, they could differentiate instruction very easily with the iPads. It definitely increased writing and engagement. The students uh, created in a fifth grade class, for example, they have to do a state report, which is not very exciting. And so the teacher used an app to help um, for kids to create their own uh, ebook. And they, because they had shared iPads, they had to create it together and collaborate. It really fostered a, um, a sense of collaboration at the school and also in that fifth grade class. Um, they, had, they were pen pals with a basketball team in, in, um, in Alaska because the teacher's daughter plays basketball for the University of Alaska. And so they had like real, a real reason to write um, and so they created the ebook based on the state that their basketball player, their pen pal, was from. And they, they wrote a story, a narrative, but they embedded real facts about the state. They only have 12 iPads in that classroom. They split them up into different sets per um, the different teachers. And so um, they only wrote about 12 states in their books. Well, during their free time, these fifth graders saying, you know what, we don't have 12 states, we have 50 states. So could we write some more books? And during their free time, these kids were writing more books. At open house, their parent, they were sharing them with their parents. Um, and when we had that kind of enthusiasm about writing, which um, kids are initially were saying, I hate writing, I dread writing, it's so hard. Um, that's something, there's something there. Um, here's what some of the teachers were saying in the two, three combo class this year. It gave the teacher an opportunity to meet that wide range. Two, three is a huge range. Um, so they could really meet the needs. It include, increased student voice, motivation, engagement for what our students, we want our students to be thinkers, but we also want them to be advocates for their learning. And that's really what the iPad gave them. Here's some apps they use. Uh, one is called Sonic Picks. They created podcasts. And the other one is Book Creator, where they made their, um, their books for uh, their state reports. Well, nonfiction, literary fiction. Um, here's some examples. Um, some of their English language learners also um, made some books. Here's an example of their ebook. This student was a newcomer this school year to, um, to the United States and was um, sharing, writing some information about, about their life. Um, so it was easy to embed pictures. Um, in this particular book, you can also embed sound, so they were able to talk in there. His same book. Hi, I'm Cameron. I'm Nick. And I'm Veronica. Welcome, Welcome to, to our podcast. podcast. Today we are going to tell you about home phones. Home phones are words that sound alike, but have different meanings and different spellings. Two examples of home phones are whale and whale. Whale, W-A-I-L, is screaming. 
This is a photo of a kid whaling. Whale. W-H-A-L-E. This is a photo of a killer whale. So remember, homophones are words that sound alike, but have different meanings and different spellings. What? Dismiss. And that's, that's a podcast, so it has visual, but they're talking in it. They had to really collaborate together, and of course, they, this time they were talking about home phones. The nice thing about this is that the teacher also has a website, so she was able to post that on the website for parents to access. I think sometimes parents are looking, as Emily said, for a glimpse into what their child does every day, and they don't always get to see that, and the technology enable, uh, allows us to be able to do that. Here's some, re some data also. So English language learners, there's a test they have to take called a California English Language Development um, Test. And these are some scores. There, this, there's a teacher there that supports English language learners called an ELIS, an English Learner Instructional Specialist. And she works at two schools. One um, has iPads, Woodside, and the other one does not like it. And so out of a sample of five students, the top score, um, they, the students all started about about the same level, level two, level one, and then in the school that didn't have iPads, um, about the same level. And here is the reading level at the end of the school year, from 14, 16, 10, 10, 15, these are different reading levels, to two, six, three, four, 16. The students who were using iPads were, um, had made an incredible growth. Is it the iPads in and of itself? I would say no, it's not just iPads, because just giving a teacher an iPad does not make good teaching. What makes good teaching is the support that goes along with it um, and learning how to use it instructionally. They use something called tumble books. It's fairly inexpensive. It, um, it's an online um, book, that they, books of, series of books. So I think about $450 for a site license for the school. The nice thing is the school can put it on their website, a direct link, and parents can also access it. It does have books in, um, Spanish as well, and it has books for the iPads. So their students, their audio books, so it can read it for them, or they can it can read it to them, um, and they get to hear that language. Especially for our second language learners, they get to hear what that sounds like, and they can repeat it and also listen to it at home. So this is they also they use audio books to help with the reading levels. And they also use the accessibility feature, the voiceover, so speaking the text for the students, um, so that they when they were surfing the web or they're using an app, it would, it would speak for them. It does kind of use that robotic kind of voice, but it does talk for them. And for fifth, the fifth grade students, here's an example of one, what one of the fifth grade students said about writing and using it with iPads this year. Um, they said, I just got hooked on writing more because of the iPad, because of how cool and awesome it made writing more inspiring to me. But kids from next year, if you, you're reading this, you guys are going to have to have a wonderful time and also a great experience for you guys. Have a fantastic time with working with the iPad, making writing interesting, sorry. So, I mean, that's from the voice of a kid that's saying, I didn't really like writing. And now they're saying, I love it. And it's made a difference. And it, you can, it's interactive. And it's a way that I can learn. It's, it's meeting different learning styles. So Carnegie is the middle school that um, was using iPads. They used it for a variety of subject areas from history, math, language, um, arts, as well as they had a technology elective. Um, here's the classes they were using it. And they had an, um, some ILS classes using it as well. Some highlights for them is they felt that it really um, enhanced the 21st century learning skills. We talk about 21st century like it's new. We're the 12 years into 21st century, but the, the teacher talked about it. He was the, um, the teacher from the school was the first one on the video that said, it's the here and now of technology, not the future of technology. It's we're using it here and now. Um, they did a lot of teamwork and collaboration, and that school wasn't necessarily one that did a lot of collaboration uh, initially, but it really brought that enthusiasm to their school, um, and they used it in a variety of settings. So the administrator is saying some things about it. Um, as an administrator, it's been a very exciting experience to watch the enthusiasm of having an iPad pilot on your campus and expanded from just a few teachers to the whole school. And many of our pilot schools this year will be having um, what they call um, demonstration classrooms. So they really just got started using and they started finding their stride and then the school year ended. So instead of just letting anybody use the iPads, for right now they're still going to be using it so that they can um, continue to learn about more how to use it, about how to use it better, but then other classroom teachers can come in and, and use it as well. 
as te teachers and students have become more familiar with using this tool, it's easy to observe how comfortable many have become with making a part of their planning, teaching, and learning every day. And they weren't, you know, they, they had another tool in their toolbox to use in the classroom. They used Comic Life, um, and some of, and they used it to create movie posters for the content they were learning about. Here are some examples from students. Um, they were learning about Lewis and Clark, and this is a collaborative movie poster that they created. And you know, it was because it's comics, who doesn't love comics? They loved it and they, they were just really excited about showing what they know in a different way. Um, and here's another one about Theodore Roosevelt. So students, what did you like most about using an iPad in that lesson, the comic life? 45, almost 46% liked that they could access information readily. 30% um, liked the interactivity, and 20% liked learning at their own pace. There were only 4% of the students that said, I didn't really like using iPads. But um, a good portion of them, they, they get to choose why they like um, and what they like about the iPads and, and to demonstrate their learning. When we get into our high schools, they targeted some groups that have um, been traditionally failing some subject areas. In this particular high school, Del Campo High School, it has about 1,900 students. And um, in some high schools, we don't necessarily mainstream. Um, our students are pulled for different subject areas. Um, in this particular case, they mainstreamed for science. They were trying to close that achievement gap for students who have traditionally failed science. And they used it in the integrated science class, and their special ed teacher um, created a science and learning center to support uh, the content that was being learned at the, uh, in the integrated science classes. Some highlights of this was it increased student achievement. So they looked at students who were special education students. They scored far below basic on standardized testing. Um, and previously failed, had a D or an F in science. These were ninth graders, so in, in middle school they failed science. Um, and they were co-enrolled in the Science Learning Center, 100%. Now this is a small number. We're talking about 12 students, something to that effect. Um, students, 100% of those students who were in the science lab and integrated science classes had a C or a better. So we have kids who traditionally have failed science are now, now passing and, and, and wanting to continue to take science, which is also what we want. Um, here's what the special ed teacher that was part of the learning lab had said. I attended somewhere around 54 hours of training, including a Saturday Mamug training. I found the training invaluable to the lack of my knowledge and technology. I went from using an overhead to a 70 inch screen, computer screen and student iPads. Now this teacher, the first day I walked in and said, hey, here's your iPad. She said, uh, I don't think I know how to use that. I said, well, this is, that's why we're part of this pilot. You're gonna get to use it. I said, do you have an iTunes account? Uh, I really don't know what you're talking about. Uh, to now, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know why it's going to make a difference for my students and I see how it had, has made a difference. To now the spokesperson at the school saying, okay, iPads are making a difference. Um, and the training that goes with that. They used iMovie. The science teacher, uh, David Item, uh, you know, he's a great teacher, um, but was saying, you know, I think iPads, yeah, I'm gonna use them for research. And he soon found that really he needed to use them for more. So students did use it for research, but then they started creating their own iMovies. I am an instructional assistant. I assist uh, the learning or helping students that are being integrated from special ed into regular ed classes. Um, we are in classrooms um, helping them with their interactive notebooks and um, seeing the technology in classrooms has really helped. I've seen a change in how the students are learning. Um, they are uh, able to advocate for themselves. We're teaching them how to uh, be able to get in there and look for themselves what that homework was or, or how did they do on that test or uh, how can I access um, that information that I didn't get when we were taking notes because our teachers are so good at putting that all on the websites for the students and uh, showing them how to get there and and it's been very um, educational for myself as well to see these students blossom. And 
So Dawn is an instructional assistant at that school. She supported the integrated sciences uh, classes as well as um, the science labs. And you know, students had an opportunity to preview content. So they could front load the content so they understood what they, you know, had more time to learn more about it. Then they supported in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom, um, back into the science lab, being able to support and review it and see it. Um, and what the teachers told me, as well as the instructional assistant, is before kids just were inundated with a lot of information, a lot of content, didn't understand it. And because they, um, they had a lot of opportunity for review and practice, as well as um, to, to preview that content, they actually knew the content. And they were the ones who, the, you heard the special ed teacher in the video that said, my kids aren't afraid, they're not shy, they're the first ones to raise their hand now, and that didn't happen at the beginning of the year. Now these kids are saying, okay, here's what I know, and now I'm showing an iPad and here's, um, here's the information I've learned in science. And the last high school is Mesa Verde High School. It's a smaller high school, it has about 1,000 students. Um, and they were targeting students who have traditionally failed algebra. Um, in high school, you have to pass algebra one, and if you don't pass it, you take it again and again, and take it until you pass it, which leads to kids hating math. Um, so they really wanted to target the students that were, uh, have already had at least failed algebra one time. Um, so they had algebra 1A, 1B, which is splitting the algebra year in half. Um, they had a special ed class as well as the California um, high school exit exam. They were helping students prep for that as well. Um, they saw increased time on task. Uh, teachers became facilitators. Traditionally at that school, they were the teacher that was up in the front presenting, here's the information, and hope that you get it. Um, and and, and not that they didn't try other things, but just having a bigger caseload in, in high school. As an elementary teacher, I see my students all the time, every day, all day, and they don't necessarily see them. They see them that one period and that's it. So they really wanted to be able to make the most of their time. Um, they did a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with students, and they had a lot of information. They used an app called Khan Academy. You might have heard of Khan Academy. It's video. Um, it, they, it allowed them to self-pace algebra for students, increase that one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, the teachers became the facilitators and coaches, and they started pulling small groups and targeting students because they had that real-time data. So students knew, finally, what they knew, what, they, what skills they still needed to work on and what they already knew and were able to do, and teachers had that information and could pull small groups for that. Here's some information about stu the students that were part of the pilot in that high school. Would they take additional math? About 66 students. So 56 said yes, they would continue to take another math. Before, they, they were ones to say, no, I will not be taking any more math, especially if I failed it. Um, and 46 of those students felt very positive about iPads. And 55, 55 students felt that their GPA increased. Now there were still, they were looking at DNF rates also, and there were still students who were failing. But they also weren't doing the work. They missed 30 days in a semester. Um, you know, so there were other factors that were involved. Um, so that's, and what that school learned, at least what they talked to me about, was that just because they gave them Khan Academy and they had like a list of different um, skills they wanted to practice, that, did, that wasn't enough. They needed to actually pre-teach it or, or do a small mini lesson. So they're gonna revise how they're going to use that Khan Academy. But what it did do is kids were getting online at home because they could access Khan Academy at home and they could review and watch the video as many times as they needed to. Um, and that really helped them. So here's what we learned from the pilot. That this iPad is a multifunctional tool. Um, and it's a great resource for teachers and, and students. You know, you can use it as a textbook for audiobooks. You can use it um, as a calculator to research. So, and, and at a smaller, a much less cost than um, putting all those different tools together. And it's at, in one area, one, one tool. In addition to that, it is critical to have ongoing training and support. You cannot just put iPads in the classroom and expect that it's going to change the way in which your teachers are teaching and the way your students are learning, that they have to have support and it has to be ongoing support. There needs to be time. Our teachers talk a lot about not enough time for collaboration, so there needs to be time for the collaboration. And, and the school sites had to dedicate some funding to be able to do that, so there was some in-kind um, uh, 
expectations from the schools, they had to put um, $1,000 aside for apps, as well as to be able to provide funding to have sub-release time for their teachers. They had two sub-release times to have the Apple training and two sub-release days the whole day um, for them just to collaborate um, together as a team, which was essential and critical to, the, to this pilot. And also a big one, that you have to learn with and from your students. Some, some people weren't open to that, and you really have to take those teachers who are willing and the students and be open to students showing you that they, what they know. And the productivity and skill building apps, um, the productivity building hours, productivity apps were key that we didn't really think of initially. We we're like, oh, there's an app for that skill. But instead it was, here's an app like iMovie or like the book creator, and here's what students can do with that app. Um, and we didn't really know that at first. What we gained, we have teacher leaders now, and we have model classrooms. As I said, we have 4,500 iPads now in our district, and that number's growing. So now we have some places, grades K-12, that we can send teachers to say, here's what it looks like, or for them to see some video that um, shows how it's being used. Uh, we are able to personalize instruction and learning for our students, no matter what their learning needs are. Increase time on task, who doesn't want that? We want our kids to be doing what we want, um, to stay on task, and that's that's harder and harder with a bigger class size. Um, increased student engagement and a decrease of behavior problems across the grades, K-12, um, where iPads were being used. And here's some next steps for our school district. Gonna continue to um, have model classrooms as, at those pilot schools. The pilot teachers will then be our mentors and provide training, kind of a train the trainer model for other school sites and, and their own school site. Um, and have ongoing professional development that will continue in our district, even though uh, we have some limited funding uh, using it as well as we can to provide that support. And that, that process, the logistical part can be a headache, especially when we're looking at a class set of iPads, not one-to-one. -one. I mean, the idea would it be everybody has their own iPad. Even, and you know, teachers, um, Initially, the teachers started with the iPads, the class set. They used one. Each of, the class, uh, each of the pilot teachers got to use one. And then they had to put it back on the cart. Or that was their decision. Some of them decided, oh, I'm going to keep one for the, to use an in instruction. But some had to put it back on the cart. And you would think we're like taking away their best friend. They, were, they had grown so accustomed to that. I would say that was one of the biggest things we needed to do was give the teachers the technology for a, a small period of time before they even used it in their classroom. For for them to use on a personal level. Okay, put the app, put your email on there, learn how to use it, learn how to manipulate it, see that it's really not that hard. And um, some schools were, uh, and, and administrators were saying, no, I'm not gonna do that. And I said, yes, you need to do that. If you want them to use it and want them to use it effectively, you need to allow them to actually play with that technology. That's what our students are doing. That's how they're learning with iPads. Some resources that we talked about um, is our website. Again, it's ipad.samwan.edu. It does have some video from those classrooms as well, um, from the iPad pilot. And the multimedia user group, um, really what that is, as Cheryl said, it's educators come about, a, we have between 100 and 120 teachers that come every time we have it on a Saturday. It's, right now with funding, we have three Saturdays a month, uh, or excuse me, this, each school year. It's all teacher-led, so teachers are running this um, from grades K-12, they're the facilitators, and it's focused on an instructional strategy and then how we use technology with it. So those are some resources there. Hopefully you had an understanding of how iPads can be used as assistive technology, um, as well as some attributes of if you, if, if there was, a, you were gonna have an iPad pilot, what those um, key factors are. The UC Davis Mind Institute was created in 1998 with the promise to find cures for neurodevelopmental disorders. Every day, our physicians and researchers come closer to fulfilling that promise. Their groundbreaking research on autism, fragile X syndrome, chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome, ADHD, and other brain disorders are helping children achieve their fullest potential. Please visit our website to find out more about current studies, upcoming events, and how you can help make a difference.